Mm -hmm. um, first of all, they noted how that in alien abduction, there was this need to harvest, or in fact, Jacques Vallée, who as far as I know mm -hmm. has no particular religious persuasion, he, he called it vital energy. And he talked about how in all of these abduction cases, whatever was going on, in his mind, smack of being identical to biblical demonology, and that these beings were trying to harvest um, DNA, not just from humans. But that they wanted it from humans, like human eggs, ovum, whatever, scoop marks sometimes found in the bodies of those that had been abductees but also animals. You go to bed one night, you wake up the next day, and Skippy the horse is laying out in the middle of the field with parts of its DNA that have been removed with with laser-like surgical precision. So uh, when I saw that, I thought, it could just be a coincidence, but it was, it was amazing to me that I was running into the same pattern again, uh, the collecting of human uh, DNA, what Vale called vital energy, matter associated with, with uh, uh, with humans, and also the collection of animal DNA for the purposes of what? Well, the interesting thing is, even the secular researchers say it appears for the purposes of creating a body into which they could extend themselves. Hmm. So it was it was startling. I mean, Dr. John Mack, uh, you know, in his attempt to clinically study so-called alien abduction, he he talked about how that uh, all these abductions had spoke to him about their sense that at least some of their experiences were not even occurring within the physical space-time dimensions of the universe as we comprehend it. They talked about these things coming through dimensions or a slit or a crack in some sort of barrier, some kind of a gateway, and how that they were entering the world from beyond the veil. Well, all this language that these secular researchers were using seemed to me to be identical to what we biblical scholars would, would refer to as uh, demonological, and and also that it that it seemed to be redundant to the story of what was happening with these ancient watchers. So, yeah, I mean, there there seems to be a record from the beginning of time that there is a phenomenology that occurs in which super intelligences have an interest where they can. And I do, by the way, we we'll do another show sometime where we talk about how people can protect themselves from this uh, ever occurring. Because what also seems to illustrate that this is demonic is that the Christians and people who can make certain um, efforts at protecting themselves through prayer and fasting seem to be able to affect this phenomenon so that it'll cease occurring. So that also tells me that high and above all of whatever these forces are, it's like the Apostle, Pitt, Apostle Paul said, for we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you might be able to withstand. So we have opportunity to uh, cloak ourselves in prayer and devotion to God, and that this is something that can create a barrier between the intrusions of, what, uh, of whatever these forces are. And, of course, whatever they are in, in my conservative interpretation is we're talking about the activity of fallen uh, supernatural powers. Well, uh we just want to take a few more minutes on the subject and then um, sort of wrap up a little bit with what some of your current activities are in your organization. So in the in, in two or three minutes, could you summarize further anything else my listeners could do or what, what Tom and I, what, what uh, uh, our listeners that we have, who, who uh, <laughs> listen to what we say, uh, actually go back and do their own homework, uh, find that much of it holds water. But now they're saying, now that I know this information, what else do I do? You mentioned spiritual protections for the family. Anything else that they should do uh, as, as Christian brothers and sisters in the Lord uh, to address this, even from a, a, a political issue, what's going on, or, or just with their families or within their church body or elsewhere? Well, look, there's, there, there are three sources of spiritual power on earth that can influence individuals. 
Number one is divine influence. This is the power that proceeds uh, from God. Secondly, satanic influence, which comes from the sphere of Satan. Uh, and then third, there is human influence. And when you mention politics, this third influence is something that has to the power to influence people for good or evil as they submit themselves to either divine or satanic control. And there have been times in history when whole countries um, submitted to God's influence. And this had the ripple effect of cleansing the, the, their legislative halls or social policies of wrong, putting us back on track, in other words. And that would spoil the strategies of evil and make possible the healing of the nation. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Um, now, conversely, there have been historic times when nations have turned their back on doing the right thing. And when they have, they've opened the door for what Psalm 78 referred to as evil angels to invade that society. And those were times when Satan's presence began to dominate the mindset of the majority and systems of government and philosophy began to become influenced by destructive spirits, by the angel of the world in the whirlwind. We'll talk about that sometime. Now, you're now, not talking about dominionism, though, right? Because I, I know you're clearly against that. I'm actually saying exactly the opposite of right. dominionism. Yeah. Right. Yeah, okay. well, I just want to make sure that's clear to people. Absolutely the opposite of dominionism. I'm, I'm, I'm like the, the champion of clobbering dominionism. <laughs> um, so, but my point being that if the church does what it is commissioned to do, and if they want to know what it's commissioned to do, look at the life of Christ and look at the New Testament church in the book of Acts. They didn't involve themselves in politics. They were preachers of the gospel. And, and this was the power that turned the world upside down. If you want to change a country, you change people in, the, at, at, in their heart. The, the preaching of the gospel is the dunamain, the dynamite, the power. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power, dunamain, the power of God. Um, and, and, and also, if any man preach any other gospel to you than that you have received of us, let him be anathema, maranatha, let him be cursed at the coming of Christ. It's high time now for the church to return to the preaching of the gospel. If we want to uh, affect our country or any other country that might be listening to this message, become preachers of the gospel. Look at what Jesus did. When they tried to involve him in politics, he wasn't interested. He wouldn't, he wouldn't buy into it at all. He invested himself and his disciples. And the Bible, in fact, says that every time they did try to come to him to make him a king, he would move through the crowd. Why? Because he knew what was in the hearts of men. He was not at all interested in becoming somebody's political pawn. Then you look at the New Testament uh, example that we find in the book of Acts. Paul, Peter, John, all of them became preachers of the gospel. They weren't interested whatsoever in joining, the, marrying themselves to some political effort. And yet, through preaching the gospel, they changed the hearts of people, continents wide. The, the scripture says they, they became known as the people who turned the world upside down. So if we want to change our culture today, it's not going to happen through marrying ourselves to a political effort. And as a matter of fact, joining ourselves to politics sets, set, it paves the way for the coming of the Antichrist. If you look in the books of Daniel, if you also look at the book of Revelation, I'm talking really fast and I know we're out of time, mm -hmm. you'll see the model there for the coming of Antichrist. And it is a political figure in the Antichrist and, the, and a religious figure in the false prophet. And this is a joining of church and state. This is a joining of the church and the political process. And so if people want to make a difference, if they want to impact their culture or their generation, we need people who are true, anointed, powerful, preachers of the gospel. These are people that can change the hearts of continents, and, and that's what will work. Look over the last decade, or look over the last 20 years, of, 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 of the religious movement's effort to join itself to political figures, to try to legislate morality, to try to uh, infiltrate the Supreme Court and overturn laws. 
I don't care. I mean, I'm not opposed to people who want to try to do that as much as I say to them, look at what it has resulted in. You haven't overturned any laws you were working to overturn. The church is dying. Even Barna, who is a, a friend of the church, has has recorded over the last 10 years the declining numbers in the church. And the church and has gotten a reputation as being oppressors rather than liberators because of Oppressors oh, yeah. rather than liberators. And, and so what they're doing doesn't work. Well, the good news out of all of this is that there will be a lot of people who see, who will be able to see what I'm talking about, what we're talking about on this show, that that the effort that they've made to try to change a, a, a culture, to try to change the world, to try to change a nation through overtaking courts and legislative authorities and whatever doesn't work. And the, and the good news about that will be that then they'll turn their eyes back to what Jesus taught and what the, the uh, disciples taught and the model of the church as it was illustrated in, in the book of Acts and in the epistles. And they'll be able to say that the way they try, that they'll be able to see that the way they triumphed was a couple of very simple things. One, they were very communal, meaning that not necessarily that everybody lived together, but that everybody took care of their own. They took care of their own. If a brother or a sister had a need, they worked to take care of that need. Secondly, that they preached the gospel. These are the two very simple lessons that you find the model of the book of Acts. And the good news about what's happening with the church now, with the church losing numbers day by day and dying, and paganism exploding, growing like crazy, religions that didn't even exist for the last thousand years suddenly having gigantic um, growth spurts, teenagers all over the world turning to Wicca and all these different things. If people want to affect their generation, preach the gospel. You don't even need to understand why that's true. Be preachers of the gospel. This is the power. This is what God will anoint. This is what God will work through to reach a generation of people. And if we can get back to that point for future and Tom Bionic, then we can change this generation for God. Well, well amen. Amen. Yeah. Hey, would would you not also agree that our discussion we've had today, while it's been out on the frontiers of our understanding of some strange topics, are are an extension of preaching the gospel and the fact that we're showing people in the public that we have answers for some of these mysteries that face us today and challenges, and that the Bible has answers in that narrative, and that that uh, what the kind of topics we're talking about here are the things that need to be part of our narrative and sharing our gospel and our testimony. Well, absolutely anything that relates to scriptural history. We have the lesson of what happened in Genesis and how it led to the Great Flood. So anything we're repeating today uh, would be something that we ought to be dialoguing, uh, especially if it means that we begin playing God and we're crossing over certain barriers, um, which God commanded us not to do. We certainly need to be... The church ought to actually be on the forefront. Um, the Catholic Church is dialoguing this some, but I'm an evangelical, and I'm seeing very little conversation from the evangelical communities, but I think part of that might be not because they're not willing to discuss it as much as it's a, it's a very quickly moving, uh, emerging field of science, and they're just not really, um, they don't really understand yet what is occurring, why it's biblical, why it could be uh, even prophetic, and, uh, and I'll tell you something, we're going to have to talk about this at some point because the, the, the prophecies, Isaiah refers in several cases. He even prayed that God would not allow the giants to come back from the grave. And, uh, and, in, and in Isaiah 13, he even talks about, in 19, he even talks about how gateways are going to open and these giants are going to return uh, as instruments of destruction on the earth in the last days. So, so uh, what once was done is now being repeated, and I think it's very prophetic, and therefore the church ought to be dialoguing and discussing it right now. And be ready uh, with answers. I remember, yeah. I remember when um, Digital Angel first came out, and they were talking about microchip implanting and all that, and Raiders News Network was the first one that wrote a huge editorial, and it, and it, and it, and it, and it went like wildfire across the Internet. And MSNBC and all, all these different places were quoting what we had written. So much, it, it had reached so many people, uh, people that, um, that they actually had to respond to it, and they wrote an editorial about, they referred to us as certain conservative Christians <laughs> have a concern <laughs> how this, yeah. 
but uh, but, but, but we but we we kept putting this forward into the news, and now you look and Digital Angel. I mean, they want to sell their whole microchipping part of that process. So believers can make a difference. Okay. We can through speaking up and talking about these issues. We can impact on a very broad level what's happening within our culture uh, today.